Disclaimer. This podcast is not suitable for children. We do curse and talk about very adult topics. We also talk about darker topics with a sense of humor, but are by no means making light of those who experience any sort of trauma and have no intention of offending. All sources for research will be in the podcast episode description, wherever you may be listening. Thanks for your time. And the dog hair is free. Wow. There you go. That was a good one, too. They've all been very spooky. Yeah. Well, it has to do with the... I don't know. The subject matter in general, I feel like we're not always like talking about spooky stuff, but it's that like research Mm -hmm. like mood, I guess, that makes me feel like sleuthing and searching for stuff. So I don't know. But no, when I was talking about this one earlier, um, and I was like, I have a a word for it Mm -hmm. that I had an original idea for it, and then I had a something that just like took over and veered off um mass effect yes <laughs> you're right it's like the opening theme it's, to mass effect it is exactly mass it's effect. like that weird club scene in <laughs> mass effect <laughs> oh god no yeah it well and and it so i'll let you announce the the topic but i have a little bit more to say oh so okay the yeah, topic well, of the week is it's very spacey because the topic is ham The Astro Chimp. There you go. Yeah. We're going to start, I think, after the disclaimer. You should just open up with, and that was Ham the Astro Chimp. Oh, okay. I can do that. We'll start doing stuff like that. Okay. But, um, yeah, no, I originally was, like, thinking David Bowie, Space Odyssey, like, I wanted to do something. I think earlier I mentioned something like uh, Congas meets (laughs) Tarzan if he were Major Tom. Or something yeah, like, I don't know. Very difficult. So I started doing stuff, but then I very quickly realized, no, it's like, it's spacey and I want to do like an escape pod, mm-hmm. like capsule type mm-hmm. feel. So that's all, um, that's all synth. That's, I just like put a bunch of sounds oh. and MIDI stuff. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't pick up a guitar for any of that. Wow. that. That was all on the synth. Cool. So, so yeah, that's fun. That's music talk. Cool. So anyway, so Astro Chimps. Yeah. Well, first, before we get into this again, um, today is the day that we launched our first episode. Oh, yeah. So we're kind of running on the adrenaline of that right now. (laughs) Yeah, no, we can talk about that a little bit. Um, It's very nerve wracking, but also fairly exciting because this is something that we've talked about doing for a while and Mm -hmm. we finally got the like nerve to do it and... So it's really fun to like see it out and to have like a little bit of feedback, even though it's mostly just from our friends. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so at this point we're recording uh, and and talking. We actually know that we're talking to an audience at this point. Mm-hmm. Like for the past three episodes, it's been us having a conversation and just kind of imagining that there are people listening. Yes. But at this point, <laughs> it's like, okay, we know there we are know people listening. People gonna be <laughs> hopefully listening up to this point. <laughs> right. Yeah. If you if you've made it to episode four at this point, uh, yeah, well I think done. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So thanks for listening and all that good stuff. Anyways, yeah, we're just that that's been posted today. We are recording October second, but from this point on, Mondays are our target. Monday mornings, Eastern Standard Time, every two weeks, mm-hmm. um, we will have something. We look forward to the Halloween week because we will have a very special episode for Halloween week. They'll be listening to this after Halloween, though. Oh, you're right. <laughs> <gasps> See, and now we start to learn the weird timing things yeah. with, with podcasting. And it, we were talking about it a little bit earlier about the uh, the weird you just cut that part. time. Just, I'm not going to cut You should just cut that part out because <laughs> nah. honestly, that's just wasting time. No, nah. long story short. Thanks for thanks for listening. If you made yeah. it this far, and hopefully we we do a lot more with it. So it's pretty exciting. Yep. Anyways, we're gonna get into it. Do it. Um. So yeah, we're talking about Ham the Astro Chimp. Um. So see, now I feel really stupid for mentioning the Halloween thing because literally, <laughs> first sentence in my notes, 
<laughs> is last episode was spooky and I need something away from spooky town. Well, so and see now you're all like happy Halloween and by the time this comes out it's going to be like November. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, so like late late November. Past me new, future me knows, it's present me that's like totally out of the loop. <laughs> yeah. Nah, that's all good. That's all good. All it's, right. it's good banter. It's fun. Okay. Um so intro, uh Ham is the first great ape launched into space it was for about 16 minutes and the results from the, his launch led to the launching of alan shepard on may 5th in 1961 speaking of mass effect do you think that's where they got shepard from <gasps> oh bitch oh. <laughs> discoveries that's Look at pretty that. cool see and i didn't even i didn't know that really makes me want to play mass effect again yeah I'm i know right lie. okay stop <laughs> Beginning of Ham's story, yep. Ham was born in July 1957 in French Cameroon, now just Cameroon, and was captured by animal trappers and sent to the rare bird farm in Miami, Florida. Why they would send a chimp to a bird farm is a good question, I'll, but go on. We'll get there. Hold on. <laughs> there, the U.S. Air Force purchased him and brought him to the Holloman Air Force Base in July of 1959. Mm -hmm. Pause. Mm-hmm. Because there's a lot to unpack in those couple of sentences. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you some taxonomy. I'm giving you some uh, history. And I'm going to give you some drama. Drama, honey. Drama, honey. <laughs> um, so first, quick note. Um, mm -hmm. A great ape are the larger monkeys or hominids. I use monkeys incorrectly. But I like saying monkeys. Yeah. Um, and are part of the taxonomic taxonomic family of primates that include pongo which is orangutan gorilla which is gorilla pan which is chimps and bonobos and then homo which is humans hmm. so use a primate honey nifty um french oh so, so cool history uh french cameroon versus now cameroon so um french cameroon was a french mandate territory in central africa and on october 1st uh, 1960 became independent and is now Cameroon. So Cameroon actually just recently, well, as we're recording this, mm -hmm. that was their Independence Day. The anniversary. Of yeah. Their independence. Um, around the end of the 19th century, the quote unquote scramble for Africa or the quote partition for Africa or even worse, the quote conquest of Africa mm -hmm. was the invasion, annexation, division, and colonization of Africa by the Western European powers. Because mm -hmm. we can't just enjoy yep. land and property. We got to fuck it up. This period is known as new imperialism. Mm -hmm. um, so all the way up to the 1960s, Cameroon was partially under French control until their independence. Hmm. Um, so Cameroon was even further subdivided. Like there was a German section, there was the French section, and mm -hmm. so on. Gotcha. Um, that is a long ass time uh, for the P Europeans to be somewhere where they're not supposed to be. <laughs> I mean, it, it hasn't stopped them before. Um, so that was just quick because I was like, French Cameroon, what? Mm -hmm. And so then I did the research and it was like all of this like new imperialism history. And I was like, oh, shit, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. You fell down a rabbit hole. I did. <laughs> uh, next, let's talk about the rare bird farm in Miami. Yeah. What about them birds? Yeah, last I checked, chimps aren't birds. So <laughs> I, I'm glad we're on the same page. <laughs> uh, this farm was on a seven-acre tourist attraction. This farm was a seven-acre tourist attraction hmm. and was a breeding farm active from 1938 to 1961, owned by Alton Freeman. Hmm. I'm not going to go so much into, like, animal ethics and stuff, but, like, not okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Period. Not okay. Especially the breeding part. That's like, ugh. Leave mm -hmm. the animals where they're supposed to be. Yeah. Leave them alone. They offered animals for purchase as pets, zoo exhibits, and with Ham, an astronaut. Hmm. It seems like a, a pretty, I mean, one small leap for, <laughs> for, for monkey kind. I've been waiting to say this, but it was like one monkey ood so the other one could eat. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stop what you're doing. <laughs> yes. You hear that? Um God, it's that family guy episode. Peter, stop what you're doing. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, no. Uh 
pets and and all that. Yeah, astronauts are pretty far far stretch. Yeah. For the rest of it. But yeah, go c- carry on. Yes. So there was tourism, but the business was really focused on just selling animals. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, not okay. Some notable animal sales, mm-hmm. which sounds really awful to say, but spider monkeys and squirrel monkeys were sold to the Fedgervair. Fedgervary. Oh God, it's Bengali all over again. <laughs> Fedgervary. F E J E R V A R Y. The Fedgervary. I'll take your word for it. Park in Iowa. Uh It's a park in Iowa. There goes Charlie. There goes the dogs. (laughs) Uh, For their Monkey Island exhibit. Hmm. Um, Capuchin and Woolly Monkeys and uh, Baby Ocelot were sold in the local papers. Hmm. And in one source, it says ham was purchased here, but in the wiki for the farm, Enos, who was another astro chimp, was purchased here. It's very possible that w- both were purchased here. Mm. It seems like they've sold a lot of animals. <laughs> a lot of space monkeys. Yeah. Space astro chimps. Um, so here's just a really funny, like, random fact. Mm-hmm. One, dogs, please. <laughs> please. Now, Charlie's brought her toy in. Okay. Hi. Yeah, not the best time. You uh, need to sit down. Later, please. Yeah, thank you. All right. Hey, my little baby. No, no, baby. Chinese, so beautiful. Okay, just a funny like divergence here. Um, in 1961, several red red whiskered. Several red whiskered. Several red whiskered. Uh huh. In 1961, several red whiskered bulbuls, which is some birds. Oh, it didn't get any better. Um, you re- could have just stayed with the several red red whiskered bulbuls. Whiskered bulbuls. And different boards. Mm-hmm. Um, imported from India, escaped and established themselves in South Florida, where they unintentionally helped in spreading seeds from the non-native and invasive Bra- Brazilian paper. Hmm. Brazilian pepper. Hmm. Brazilian pepper is not like true black peppercorns, but it is harvested, dried, and sold as pink peppercorns. Hmm. So this is a, a tree, and mm-hmm. it fruits, you know, the little peppercorns. Mm-hmm. Also, the sap is like poison ivy and can par- paralyze birds. And according to the AMA Handbook of Poisonous and Injurious Plants, the triterpenes, <laughs> triterpenes, <laughs> Tri- triterpenes. No, 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 no! Don't. <laughs> you can't go gloss over that. T R I. T E R P E N E S. Peenies. <laughs> the fruit can fuck you up, basically. Watch out for them trap penises. Yes. They'll fuck you up. <laughs> It'll fuck you up. Oh god. But the tree does have it does have a great importance for indigenous people and it's been used medicinally. Recently, there's studies that show that there's promise for treating MRSA. Hmm. Um, Anyways, the birds still thrive in South Florida to this day. Uh, Then the farm closed in 1961. We're not mad about it. (laughs) Wonderful. Yes. Uh, Final one. Uh, Mm. The Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico. I'll be super quick about this one. Mm -hmm. U.S. Air Force Base in southern New Mexico established in 1942. Named after George V. Holloman, who was a pioneer in guided missile research. Hmm. Uh, Lots of different training units in this military base. Uh, I'm sorry, Air Force Base. Um, I'm not going to get too much further into this because, like, Army, Air Force, military jargon is just too much for my little head. So we're going to move on. (laughs) Okay, ham story. Mm -hmm. So, yes, born, animal farm, Air Force Base. Uh, Ham was in a lineup of other 40 other chimps as flight candidates and was labeled as number 65 and wouldn't be named Ham until after the success of his flight. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ham was an acronym for Holloman Aero Medical. Okay. Yep. I'm like, okay, sure. Yeah. I I don't don't get it, but okay. It it wasn't really explained either. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Really sad 
They didn't want to give him a name until they knew the mission was a success because they didn't want the bad press from the death of a named chimp. I <laughs> anticipated something similar to that. I mean, that makes sense. But they did give him a nickname. The 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 researchers or whatever, the mm -hmm. people studying and working with him, uh, did give him a nickname. They nicknamed him Chop Chop Chang, um, which feels... Racist? Racist. <laughs> Um, they even printed this name on a patch. Okay. Uh, I will be posting this on Instagram. By the way, the Instagram is at the dog hair is free. Mm -hmm. Just spelled exactly as it said. And, and there will be a single post containing all of the pictures yes. <laughs> for, for this episode. Um, yes. as Jess specified to me today while uploading pictures for our first episode yes. that I should not upload. 10 separate pictures yes. but one picture containing 10 pictures <laughs> or one post containing 10 pictures. it was just a moment of like taylor i know come on dude anyway, anyway. anyways we're, we'll get him there folks we'll get him there <laughs> um yes so his nickname mm -hmm. um i also saw that they just called him chang mm -hmm. um but that was on another article um that was a bit more I guess trying to be a bit more politically correct, so they just dropped the chop chop part. Mm -hmm. Thank God. <laughs> but still, you know, it's like, yes, insensitive. Should it be remembered, though? I guess not. It doesn't really matter, does it? I don't know. I mean, I, uh, history is, is like, I don't know. History's facts. It is, but if it doesn't actually move along well, can we just start dropping like very prejudiced details that mm -hmm. offer no i mean it does give insight to the people doing the research i mean these dudes were probably like you know military base you know what i i should have looked this up but i wonder when pearl harbor happened mm, that was World War II. I'm not sure when Pearl Harbor <sighs> happened, but uh, like what I'm trying to get at is like make us look stupid, like prejudice, yeah, existing, uh -huh. and to show that prejudice existed. Yeah, I mean prejudice has existed longer than just World War II, though. It it's yeah. I mean, I I am personally of the camp that believes if you've got the information. And you're trying to do something historical, like it should be included, no matter how small or large mm. the detail. Just because the whole thing paints a picture. I mean, yeah. like you look at um, like guitar related stuff. Like I watch the JHS show because um, they do a lot of guitar history related stuff. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what I've learned is that stuff that has developed the course of guitar tones and guitar sounds has come out of not necessarily stuff that's been created specifically for guitar it's all been like repurposed radio parts and different things so this stuff over here that you would think wouldn't have any impact on this other stuff over here actually is the reason that that other stuff is existing mm. in the first place so i don't know if the same can be said for like words and names and prejudices and i mean i'm sure it can be but that's that's just kind of how i look at it mm -hmm. like i don't know no detail is too small especially when you're considering considering history that's typically been filtered by the quote-unquote victors mm -hmm. of conquests and, and this and that so yeah i don't know that's my thought i have to i think i have to think about it and research it a bit more to like have a more solid opinion mm -hmm. on things because part of me is like well it doesn't really mean much mm -hmm. in the context of this because like he's a monkey but at the yeah. same time i think maybe there's something to be said about like viewing this creature as a lesser being and giving him a very racist type of name because he's seen as a lesser being like that oh yeah that's the problem no totally yeah and yeah. and trying to understand like so why is it important for us to understand that and how do we learn from that i 
I'm not educated enough in like those type of studies to say anything or to make an opinion. It's just, it's interesting to see that one source said something and the other source didn't. It's just like, okay, so like what, yeah, what's okay. Right. Yeah. Well, and yeah, and there's that, that like bias that we all carry as people that report on, on things, whether mm -hmm. you're writing an article or talking about it or doing whatever, we all carry certain biases and, mm -hmm opinions and perspectives and all this stuff so that's why I, if i've got the information i like to include it um and in, in regards to this so like mm -hmm. his full name sure like include it it may not seem important but i don't mm -hmm. know maybe it is to some uh, like other detail so anyway yeah a bit of a tangent but yeah yeah that's kind of the point of this though in some sometimes is like it interesting topics come up like that where it's like well wait a minute mm -hmm. is that okay <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. yeah um all right july 1959 ham was training under the neuroscientist joseph v brady in a nasa program called project mercury to complete mm. simple time tasks in response to electronic lights and sounds if so if ham saw the blue light flash he would push the blue lever if he saw the white light flash, he'd put push the white lever, pull the lever, crunk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, failure to complete the task would result in him receiving a light electric shock to the soles of his feet. Okay. While a correct one got him a little banana pellet. Okay. Um, so who the fuck is Joseph and why is he shocking monkeys? What? I'm going to tell you. Okay. Joseph Vincent Brady was an American psychologist, neuroscientist, and founder of behavioral pharmacology. Mm -hmm. uh, early in his career, he joined the reserves and was later commissioned as a second lieutenant and an infantry pl platoon leader in the U.S. Army and would serve in World War II in the European theater. Mm -hmm. European theater meaning like in Europe, mm -hmm. not like the theater. Right. Yes. The, <laughs> the war stage yes. that is the European theater. Uh, he was assigned to the 317th Station Hospital in Weisbaden, Germany. Weiss. Weisbaden. Weisbaden. Um, shit. Okay. Here. Which was a former Luftwaffe hospital and was designated as the Neuropsychiatric Center of the European Command. Hmm. While there, he served as the chief clinical psychologist, even though he had no prior training. So he spent two and a half years there teaching himself how to do psychological assessments from the German books. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, that's wait, wait, fucking wait. wild, right? No, well, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Teaching himself? Yeah, in German. Okay. From the German psychology books. All right. In this Luftwaffe <laughs> hospital. And, and then he awards himself a certificate or a diploma? No, he just, he was just... These dudes were coming in from the battlefield, and they he would they were like psychologically assess them, and he's like, "This guy is fucked up." <laughs> well, that, that's see, that's what I'm hearing <laughs> yeah. is that you've got someone by my German books. This guy is fucked up. <laughs> yeah, now you've got someone who's yeah. I don't know. It's it's kind of uh, it's a little armchair psychologist to me. <laughs> a little bit, but I'm also like, like you you do what you got to do. Yeah, I, like I you mean, do what you gotta yeah, do. It is war time. This is World War II. They don't have the cell phone, where they're like, "Hey, can you send me a doctor that knows how to look at people's brains or whatever?" Yeah, and he's got all the books there. That's not the first questionable thing that we've talked about during this. He's a, he's a smart guy. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, uh, we would hope. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, uh -huh. Joseph Brady continues his education at the University of. Sic <laughs> you want to try that again? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Joseph Brady continues his education at the University of Chicago and his doctoral dissertation researches conditioned emotional responses in rats and demonstrates that conditioned anxiety responses could be eliminated through electroconvulsive shock. Mm. Which is like electroshock therapy. Right. Yep. Yeah. Gotcha. He's like, these rats got anxiety. Let me just... <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it just fixed them. We'll They're fix totally it. calm. They're fine. They don't have anxiety <laughs> anymore. I'm like, here, strap me up. <laughs> right. 
so uh so electric electro convulsive shock it it's when a generalized seizure is electronically electrically induced to manage refractory mental disorders mm-hmm. because seizures are okay and fine it sounds very traumatic to me yeah uh he got his doctorate in psychology in 1951 and continued his studies of conditioned emotional responses in animals including rats and primates hmm. so don't here we go we're coming back to the story i was about to say i i don't i don't necessarily like a lot of what's happening yeah no we're in coming the story back. so far we're coming back we're coming back <laughs> So uh, this guy, Werner von Braun, he's uh, with the U.S. Army Ballistics Agency, calls up Joseph, and he wants him and his science buddies to come help shock, I mean, train monkeys mm-hmm. uh, so we can send them. <laughs> I just, it just clicked in my head, that weird, like, Freudian slip that <laughs> yeah. just happened. He called him back to shock, I mean, train. <laughs> <laughs> train monkeys so we can send them to space and see if we can send humans to space. And Joseph was like, totally. Got mm-hmm. it. Um, Murray Sidman, who is one of the science buddies, uh, he's the one who developed the avoidance procedure mm-hmm. by training rhesus monkeys or macaques mm-hmm. um, to press a lever at a specific time to avoid an electric shock. Mm-hmm. Uh, if the lever was pressed correctly at the correct time, no shock. Gotcha. So they're not getting banana pellets. It's not as luxurious. It's just a it's just a pain avoidance yes, tactic. Yes. Yes. Which is interesting. Um, that's why I said one mon- monkey ood so the other could eat. <laughs> God. Yeah, carry on. Um. Okay. Uh. Nineteen fifty nine, as precursor to Ham's flight, two trained monkeys, Abel and Baker were launched into a 10,000 per mile suborbital orbital flight in the nose of a cone of a Saturn rocket while successfully completing the pre-launch avoidance tasks and were recovered. Hmm. So they lived. Wow. Um, now Joseph Brady enters NASA's Project Mercury. Mm-hmm. Mercury. Mm-hmm. Mercury. Your favorite word. <sighs> uh, oh, and like rest of joseph brady's story like whatever he retires or something at some point teaches there's more but and we're coming back to him he lives a full life and and goes on he does yeah mm-hmm. um except i i don't i'm gonna derail one more time because at this point i watched the peter gabriel shock the monkey music video <laughs> i okay so we were we were in the living room the other day and we were looking through <laughs> youtube and you went into your uh, history, your like subscriptions or whatever, and I noticed that that video had been played, and I was yes. like, "Wow, that's really random." But yeah. I didn't ask any questions about it, so that makes sense now. Yeah, so I listened to that, and I'd never seen the music video before, so I was just watching it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and apparently, it's like a it, people tend to misinterpret it. So a quote from Peter Gabriel is: uh, "Most people saw Shock the Monkey as a sort of animal rights song, but it was actually a song about jealousy." Uh, I did not pick that up at all mm-hmm. through the music video. Um, mostly it's just Peter Gabriel in a suit in very odd places, <laughs> like kind of like Beetlejuice E type places, um, with random bits of vague cultural appropriation via tribal face painting. Oh, nice. Yeah. I, I don't know. It was a different time. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I could be way off base with this, but I feel like shock the monkey and again, way off base, way off topic, but real quick, I feel like. That whole, like, it was about jealousy thing. It shocked the monkey, the monkey being, like, his ego. I, yeah, like, well, I think he. it was more like a, his, it was supposed to be a a symbol for his, or for the, like, human, fuck, what am I trying to say? Um, like, our animal instinct. Like, our animal oh, behavior. Yeah, 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 yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I could, yeah, totally. I could see that. Um, Like, are more, like, savage. Mm-hmm. Like, sure, yeah, like, the ego. Yeah. The, the ego type side. Right. But more um, devolved, mm-hmm. I guess, like, our animal instinct. Yep. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, I keep on bringing up Project Mercury. Mm-hmm. Project Mercury was the first human spaceflight program of the Uni- United States. 
Its goal was to put a man into Earth orbit and then return them safely before the Soviet Union. Uh, I don't think we did it, but like, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, Was taken over from the U.S. Air Force by the newly created NASA and conducted 20 uncrewed developmental flights, some using animals like ham and six successful flights by astronauts. The astronauts were known as the Mercury 7, and each spacecraft was given a name ending with a 7 by its pilot. I'm not sure why there were six flights, but seven dudes. Hmm. I, I tried to see if I could find it really quick, but I, I couldn't really figure it out. But also, Project Mercury is like its own huge thing. So I, mm-hmm. I'm i going to, again, same as the military base, or the, I'm sorry, the Air Force base, like we're just going to grace past that because wow that's a lot of information there a lot of drama too yeah a lot of like marital drama yeah i mean that's yeah that's so i might go back into that just for the drama because this man was married to this woman and this woman was seeing this man but that man was not her husband yeah i mean (laughs) i mean like the 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 top story is all of the military stuff and this and that but i mean there's always stuff going on behind the scenes that you don't really think about but then like nasa was like we only want happily married people yeah and the guy who was obviously not happily married was like i'm totally happily married and then they sent him to the moon (laughs) (laughs) so see and that's 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 an odd idea to me we only want happily married people so that we can jettison you off of the planet away from the person that you're happily married to one it's because this is like the 60s yeah but two it's it's also just for press Mm mm-hmm Oh yeah. Well, so they want good old that. American boys and anyways. yeah, the nuclear family. Um, so we're just gonna leave it at that. Now, this is about ham. We're talking about ham. We are. I would like to formally apologize because this episode has officially gone off, gone the, rails. off the rails. <laughs> but that's what I'm doing this for. Yeah, that's what my goal was. Nah, you just want to have fun. I do fun conversations, and I'm enjoying it. So let's go. Everybody's okay. along for the ride. If you made it this far. Just yeah, hang in there. Thanks. We'll get there. Um, so Ham is getting shocked and trained for his mission in the Project Mercury program. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he passes. Uh, they assign him an AMR-2 and begin preparations to launch from Cape Canaveral, Florida. Hmm. The MR-2, or Mercury Redstone 2, is a launch vehicle to spaceship. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I have to derail again for a second. Uh, fun fact uh spaceman uh effects uh musical they make pedals and musical oh, effects yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah. they just um recently not just but they recently released a um it was a preamp pedal i believe called the redstone oh interesting it's a, an amp like um i don't know tube amplifier like preamp hmm. something germanium diodes and all that fun stuff anyway so cool. shout out to spaceman yeah um, if you would like to know what an MR2 looks like, again, the Instagram, I've got a lot of pictures going up for this one because there's a lot of fun pictures of Ham with his little capsule and stuff, but you can see what the, the, uh, MR2 looks like. And if you're looking at the picture now, if you see the very top point, if you look between the red part at the very tip and the white part, he's in that little black capsule hmm. at the top of the, of the rocket of the the spaceship whatever you want to call it um there's a really great video that i actually got a lot of the next following information from on the new mexico museum of space site um it's got footage from the flight it's got um like frame by frame pictures of of ham like what it looks like from that perspective leaving the atmosphere and coming back into the atmosphere which is really crazy Hmm. um so yeah, I, I recommend that video. That video is actually really cool to watch. Nice. You you can see the launching. It's all in color. I think parts what? of it are in color. I'm sorry, you said there was a you had a link to it. It's on somewhere. Something? Yes, I I will have that link. Cool. It'll be linked in um the notes, the descriptions. Um. Yeah, I don't know if we're doing the sources in the Instagram or social media stuff, but it will be like if you're on say Spotify, if you look in the description of this episode you will find the source there yeah cool i have to look at that um i'm interested i've not seen it yet yeah so they strap little guy into a form-fitted pressurized capsule that they're calling the couch 
And on January 31st, 1961, Ham is launched into space. <laughs> my notes, I was like looking at my notes. I'm like, what the fuck? I like, I'll post a pedicure of what it looks like. <laughs> I'm like, what? A pedicure? Yeah, I meant to say picture. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading it and I was like, what the fuck am I talking about? Okay. Uh, the goal was to launch Ham 150 miles in altitude. So going up, altitude mm -hmm. is up, longitude is horizontal. Uh, altitude through the atmosphere into space, but a booster malfunction burned fuels about five seconds faster than planned, hmm. which can really fuck up your rocket ship. Oh, yeah. I mean, five seconds with something like that is a really long time. Yeah. Uh, so the control system ignited and the escape tower, which is the red bit, uh, which was attached to the capsule Ham was in, propelled Ham 157 miles in altitude faster than 5,000 miles per hour. So the, the aim was 125 miles. This motherfucker was shopped 157 miles. <laughs> wow. Yes. And they didn't plan for that. Mm. Poor little guy. Could you imagine? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. my God. And he's got no window. He can't see outside of this thing. Yeah. He's just in this shaky little, uh, like, <laughs> oh, my God, this poor little thing. Jeez. Like, oh, my God. It's so, so sad. So this, it really fucked up the reentry trajectory, and he landed 122 miles off course into the ocean. Mm -hmm. So he survived... 15 times the force of gravity upon re-entry. Wow. Just tumbling. Mm -hmm. Not not going straight down. He's not sitting his little thing going down like Tower of Terror. Like he is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a Tower of Terror. <laughs> he, he is just like bungee cording down, just like flipping. Like could you... The G-force. Yeah. This oh, poor geez. little thing. So Ham's performance in lever pushing through his launch was only a fraction of a second slower than it was on Earth through testing. Mm. Demonstrating tasks could be performed in space. Wow. I I would have like passed myself and shit my pants. <laughs> and, like, yeah. like, oh my God. And this fucking monkey mm -hmm. is like, oh shit, I better pull this lever before I get shocked. And he's like getting like tumbled into space. Yeah, wow. Well. Well, and that's, um, I mean, that's going back to the whole, like, conditioning based off of uh, avoidance of fear. This monkey or was traumatized. Yeah. So, like, even, that's really sad to consider that the actions that he was performing um, he were was, not of, like, oh, I'm doing a good job. I'm going to get a reward. It's like, I'm. I am more scared of this than than what I'm going through right now. Yeah. That's terrible. That's so sad what else you got i hope you end on a, a positive note so, uh. <laughs> <laughs> great great uh so the whole flight was about 16 minutes and 39 seconds mm -hmm. of just pure terror that's a really long time wait how long again 16 minutes 16 minutes that's a really long time terror yeah and then for two fucking hours this dude is just sitting in the middle of the ocean yeah just choppy waters that Apparently, would, like that the, would make me shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> the like tau the the uh the flotation device uh -huh. like pops because it's so choppy. Mm -hmm. Like like the thing that was supposed to keep him afloat wasn't even enough for how fucking angry the ocean was that day. Mm -hmm. It's like why is this monkey in here? <laughs> Jeez. So, according to the Save the Chimp article. Mm -hmm. Which I, I feel really bad. I should have mentioned this. A lot of my information did come from Wikipedia, but I did look at a lot of the sources and I'm cool with them. But I did find an outside source from the Save the Chimp article. Um, but they were saying that considering all the bullshit, Ham was fairly calm when they retrieved his capsule. Hmm. Uh, I think he was fully disassociated. <laughs> I, I think... <laughs> He this monkey left his body. <laughs> yep. Wow. Well. Yep. Um, he had no injuries except for a little bruise on his nose. Hmm. Uh, but when they opened the capsule to like see him, Ham had an enormous grin on his face, which would be taken by media as a positive reaction. 
uh, but for apes and chimps yeah, that's, specifically, that's not good. It's not good. No. Uh, large grins, bearing teeth are usually signs of extreme fear and anxiety. Yeah. So when you go to the zoo, stop smiling at those monkeys. Yeah, they it freaks them out at the uh, at the Ashboro Zoo. They've got a that diagram on the wall that mm-hmm. shows all the different like facial expressions. Yeah, um, don't. Don't smile at the monkeys. That's, that's where I learned all my monkey facial expressions at yeah. the Ashboro Zoo. But yeah, well. Yeah. So some asshole photographers did try to get the scientist to put him back into the capsule for some pictures. And <laughs> Ham was like, bitch, I'd like to see you try. <laughs> and they could not get him back in. Yeah. I don't blame him. So the success of Ham's flight led to Alan Shepard's flight, who is one of the Mercury 7 dudes Mm -hmm. um which launched on may 5th uh, 1961 aboard the freedom seven because like i said all of the ships were labeled with the seven Mm -hmm. alan shepherd is also one of the astronauts to land on the moon Hmm. yeah it might be interesting to do something on him one day i don't know depends on how i'm feeling or we could just be couch potatoes and and sit and play mass effect (laughs) (laughs) Um, so I labeled this next part retirement. Okay. Um, April 5th, 1963, Ham was transferred to the National Zoo in Washington, D.C., where he lived a very sad, uh, isolated life for 17 years. Hmm. Yeah, he just was by himself. For um, any particular reason? Could he not be, like, reassimilated to I didn't, a, a, a troop? Or I a didn't group? see in any other source. Hmm why that was the case it was just a very isolated 17 years Hmm. i'm kind of thinking because my thing is like (laughs) how do you like readjust a monkey that's just been in space yeah to like a troop of other monkeys yeah he's yeah he's trying to reintroduce him to a he's gone through like shock therapy (laughs) looking around at all the other chimps like i've seen some shit i've seen some shit i've seen shit guys you wouldn't believe. <laughs> and all the other monkeys are like, this this guy's seen some shit. No, all the other monkeys are like, ooh, ee. Yeah. <laughs> That's very sad. Yeah. Um, then he was transferred um, in September 25th, 1980 to the North Carolina Zoo. Oh. Where he joined a small troop of chimps. Look at that. Yeah. So, and that's the... North, the North Carolina Zoo, I'm assuming, is the Ashboro Zoo. I mean, it's, I it's the only zoo so. in North Carolina, I think. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There. Which we're, we really love the Ashboro Zoo. We've been a couple times. Yeah. We, we really like it. Bring it on home. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, luckily, there are no records of him going through any more experience, experiments after his flight. No, that's good. Uh, I... He, Let he, me just repeat, there are no records. Yeah. He no, didn't right. immediately go from the Air Force to the zoo. Right. There was a couple years there where he just kind of chilled at the Air Force base. Yeah. Well, no, I'm I'm sure they did some follow-up testing and all that kind of stuff. So January 19th, 1983, Ham passed away at the estimated age of 26, which is actually, that's fairly young, I think yeah for a chimp it's i've seen chimps live up to like 40 i I was about to say yeah i think like 40 like mid 40s 46 for some reason is an age that is in my head so i mean i can't there's no like i wonder why and like this poor thing went to space and like survived shock therapy like (laughs) and and the american government wants to say that anxiety is not a uh a a threat to livelihood and (laughs) and then was put in solitary for 17 years like this poor thing yeah um so his body is autopsied by the armed forces institute of pathology I guess they wanted to see what the organs of a chimp who's been in space 20 years ago looked like. Um, yeah. I'm d- like, okay. The same? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the plan after his autopsy was to have him taxidermied to be displayed in the Smithsonian, but people were not thrilled and they decided against it. Yeah, thankfully. I, yeah, that geez. seems. I mean, make a make a statue of him or something. Yeah, but God. I don't know. The whole Very, taxidermy put thing. It, put that monkey to rest. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I could see a buck head on the wall or something. Like, sure, taxidermy that, but I don't know. Something weird about a, a chimp. 
Yeah, so they they did keep his skeleton, though, and it is held in the collection of the National Museum of Health and Medicine in Maryland. Hmm. Um, The rest of his remains were buried at the International Space Hall of Fame in New Mexico. Hmm. Okay. Um, This all feels very disgraceful, but the biggest disgrace Mm -hmm. is Ham the Space Monkey by Ray Allen and the Ambers. Uh Uh-huh. Made in 1961. Ham the Space Monkey? Yeah. Is the song that's the most disgraceful? Yes. Okay. I will show you this. I'm assuming you listen to it? Yes. It's bad. Okay. It's just got the worst sounds in it. Should we like break for a second so that we can listen to a short clip and then we'll just like cut back in? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So I think... (laughs) I think uh, PETA would have something to say about that song, for yeah. sure. <laughs> it was so bad. I, I think it was just one of the random, like, cultural links in the Wikipedia article for him. And I, I was like, oh, cute, like a 60s song. Uh, it was like, no, this is awful. It, yeah. I mean, well, and we're so... I, I don't, I'm not mad at it because... I'm mad. Every, I'm livid. Well, I, I, I'm mad at that. But I, like I was about to say, the the whole like PC culture thing that we've got going on now in like 2022, mm-hmm. and a lot of stuff nowadays that would not fly, uh, did mm-hmm. in the 50s and 60s mm-hmm. and yada yada. And that's one of those things where it's it's like ah, he's doing all kinds of weird noises and voices and yeah, and it's just not it's not in it's not in good taste. Not not for the like trauma this poor monkey went through. <laughs> no, it, it was and again it's it's just a it's just a different time. Yeah. So. So yeah, that's that's Ham the Astro Chimp. There um, are others. There's Enos, like I mentioned before. Hmm. There was Abel and and Baker. Uh, there are a couple other ones hmm. um, that maybe we can get into at a later time. But Ham was the first great ape to make it into space to leave earth's atmosphere wow yeah and and then there was hammond the the space hamster that rolls around in a ball and (laughs) has machine guns on the side of it oh okay stop (laughs) (laughs) a little little overwatch joke for those of you in the loop out of the bad taste joke yeah Uh, anyway so yeah that's that's that so uh doggy horoscopes yeah yeah yeah. All right. What did you find? Um, I have found the horoscopes for our doggies. That's what I found. Um, I found so these are coming from horoscope dot com, uh, under the uh teen category. <laughs> as all reputable <laughs> horoscope websites do. That's strange. Well, no more strange than the previous episodes we've done. So Charlie's horoscope, um, Miss Aries herself. Uh, this is for the week of September 26th through October 2nd. Uh, today being October 2nd. Wow. Uh, not okay. Th- so, so this is we're we're trying to validate this horoscope then. True. Yeah. So yeah. we're looking back at the week now. Yes. So Charlie's week, according to horoscope.com, <laughs> under the teen category, <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. has consisted of. When they say, expect the unexpected, they're talking to you. And they're saying it about Monday and Tuesday. That's really specific. What happened Monday and Tuesday? I don't know. Things are a little less chaotic on Wednesday and Thursday. And it's a good thing because you've got a long to-do list. Your absolute focus is necessary if you want to get everything crossed off of it. Friday through Sunday is a good time to talk to strangers. But don't be surprised when they talk back. We had friends over. Oh, and I I was very firm with her in telling her to go back into the bedroom. Because she was around <laughs> she was around the food and I told her to get and she didn't get and I had to remind I had to like walk her back two or three uh-huh. times to the bedroom uh-huh. and tell her to stay. <laughs> and she did eventually. But um Oh my goodness. I think she was a little surprised when I talked back <laughs> in front of the friends. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what was happening Monday and Tuesday, but I can't remember. Yeah, what was what was Monday and Tuesday? I'm trying to remember what I was doing Monday and Tuesday. God, the week is like a 
freaking blur. I, I don't remember. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, that's Charlie's. Yep. Mayla. What's going on with Mayla? She's Charlie's. sitting right here for once. She's usually not in the room with us. Look at her. Big old blob on the floor. <laughs> so, Miss Sagittarius herself, um, you're way out there on Monday and Tuesday. Something, something's going on on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, but you really don't care. <laughs> Surprise. You're having fun. And what everyone else thinks of you is their business. <laughs> Your energy is more subdued on Wednesday and Thursday, but you can still accomplish a lot if you focus on one goal. You want to help other people on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, so volunteering your time is highly rewarding. Find an opportunity that matches your skills and then do what you can to help those in need. Those people that came over were in need of attention and a warm dog to cuddle with. And, oh, she didn't deliver, actually. No, she was in the room sulking the no, whole time. No, she moped. Yeah, for some reason. Because we told her to go lay down. And she was like, fine. No, I'm going to go lay down the whole we, night. Well, well, yeah, we did tell her to go lay down. <laughs> I was about to say, no, we told Charlie to go lay down. And Mayla, for whatever reason, thinks that whenever we're yelling at Charlie or whenever we're scolding Charlie, that uh, like automatically includes her. So she just lumps herself in yeah. with the scolding. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. She was just sulking. Um, I like the part where it said she didn't give a fuck. <laughs> 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 i like the part where it says that my dog was a badass she in said, teen horoscope talk she said I, i'm this way i don't give a fuck yeah i don't give a fuck nobody else i don't care what nobody else thinks of me what everyone else thinks of you is their business yeah so yes mela we could all learn something from mela so thanks horoscope.com forward slash us forward slash horoscopes forward slash team forward slash horoscopes dash team dash weekly dot asp x question mark sign equals nine there cool. you go <laughs> great <laughs> that's just so i don't have to write it out in the notes yeah uh so yeah monday it. was rosh hashanah why do you know that and i do not because it's on my phone see i'm such a bad jew <laughs> bad you no. <laughs> yeah <laughs> no yeah my, my family and i talked about that on sunday or something there was some confusion about the holiday that was coming up i remember now but yeah rosh hashanah was recent so happy belated rosh hashanah to all the all the other jews listening anyways that's it i don't have anything else for you and I never have anything for you, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Till next time. Yep. Thanks for listening. Thanks Ad for your time. Adios. Congrats on making it to the end of the episode. Why don't you give us a follow wherever you're listening and maybe even leave a review. Put in a good word with the algorithm, you know? For picture references and other general content related to the pod, you can follow our social accounts at the dog hair is free on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. Subscribe to get notifications when we post new episodes, but otherwise we're targeting releases every other week, so hopefully more frequently in the future. And again, thanks for your time. The dog hair is free is free is free